But let's move, talk about what the text of the market is looking like. Sunil Subramaniam in the studios with us. Sunil, hi, uh, morning, good to have you in the studio right here. Seems like uh, the market is getting a little bit nervous or at least consolidating as we step into earnings. Tomorrow's there's that, uh, you know, all important vote on the Brexit deal as well. That's also keeping global markets a little nervous too. Yeah, and not only that, and I think uh, US, there's a clear indication of a slowdown. Mm. So from that perspective, again, in terms of what uh, tractions and Trump and the U.S. government shutdown has been the longest known history, yeah. right? So there are lots of global uncertainties around and domestically you don't need to ask. The political uncertainty outweighs everything else. Yeah, speaking of that political uncertainty as well, um, you know, that there are plans in place now for the BJP to counter that SP, BSP push in UP, etc. But I just want to understand as an event, what do you believe the markets will do in terms of digesting it? You were saying in terms of volatility, it will be very crucial. Yeah, I think the, the there are two, three factors which are very, very clear. I think given the recent state elections results, I think the Modi government, BJP, cannot get a standalone majority. I think mm. that's very clear. At the same time, what's also clear is that the BJP will emerge as the single largest party. Two. Three is their ability to cobble together an NDA alliance. Right? Those are the things the market will be looking for. Because I think as long as the market gets certainty that the Modi-led government and India, broader NDA government comes back to power, that will ease a lot of the tensions. And the market breadth, actually if you look at it, the earnings, this quarter's earnings will be a little bit under pressure. But overall, the economic footprint of the nation, I think, is pretty healthy. So what we feel is that there's a lot of money waiting on the sideline, sidelines because of the volatility, mm -hmm. which is parking itself in fixed income come in you know uh, more liquid securities so which post election will come through and we believe that the first half of the year and the second half of the year are going to be a very sharp contrast and the second half will see a strong bounce back on not just the market because even economically we see that the consumption growth continues to be strong and that's leading to capex capacity utilization rising mm -hmm. so by the second half of the year the capex cycle will really kick start so we believe that uh, money which is waiting on the sidelines will come through in a big rush post the election scenario and if you see past elections I think that's the been the way it is the trend okay wanted to understand what is it that you've made of the fact that IIP has now slumped to a 17 month though I mean of course you know there was that uh, contraction in manufacturing which took a toll on the numbers but would you say that maybe now uh, one can raise expectations that come February we will see maybe a rate cut by the RBI? I think it's early days for a rate cut uh, because of the fact that the while the inflation footprint is good, right? I think the government, the growth overall also GDP, GVA is pretty, pretty good. So I think with the 7.2% growth expected this year, I think RBI will pause but not yet rate cut at this stage. So I think that's a little bit down the road. Okay. Um, what's the expectation from the budget in terms of how you're looking at the overall macroeconomic backdrop right now? I know you're saying that the second half would be better hmm. uh, for, for the equity markets, but where are we placed on the macro front right now? I think the macro front, the uh, current account deficit, uh, thanks to the oil prices easing, yeah. I think the fears that were there a month ago in terms of how much rise have come down a bit. So that's not a worry. Second is that in terms of the government actually going and spending money, right? Because it's a vote and account, I think this government is not just going to splurge. I think they'll find innovative ways to create. But because it's too short a time frame, so this government has already they've clearly indicated that they're not going to do farm loan waivers. Mm. I think the Congress has taken the lead in doing farm loan waivers. Any action by the BJP to do farm loan will seem like a me too step, you know, in terms of, oh, they did it first. Yeah, yeah. So they will look at innovative ways to do. And I think that so farm loan waivers are the big, big chunk in that side. And third is that the fact is that the expenditure is already caught up in line. And revenues are dropping. So there's not much headroom for the government to actually go and spend money, which is not there. So I think it will be a pretty much a non-event, this uh, vote on account. It will be, a, 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 it'll be like a steady thing, not rocking the boat whichever way. And what is going to be your advice to investors in terms of the portfolio strategy for this year? I think uh, given the uncertainty of the election, the first half of the year, I would say 60% in large caps, 40% in uh, mid and small caps. Second half, they should reverse the portfolio to 40% in large caps and 60 The reason being that uh, in an election year, the consumption story is the right and, and there is no consumption in the large cap space, valuations being high are the safer bet. Okay. right? So I would say they should place safety in a a slightly higher thing till the election. Post the election, they should rapidly move their thing to risk. And by risk, we mean cyclicals, capital goods, corporate banks, and infrastructure and the like.
Mm. Wanted to understand what is it that you're making of IIT. You know, while this is traditionally the weakest of the quarters, Q3 for IIT, but you know, one is seeing an interesting uh, move on buybacks by companies like Infosys, for instance, which are sitting on such large piles of cash, wanting to you know churn the cash and thereby come out with buybacks. Uh, do you think now with Infi and TCS out with their numbers, this valuation gap could get a little bit narrowed? Uh, because that seems to be, uh, you know, one of the key things in favor of Infos is the fact that the buyback pricing is at a 17% premium to its Friday's close. No, I agree with your view. I think the valuation gap will, will narrow, especially given the fact that the U.S. with the growth slowdown, that's not a big positive either for the dollar mm. or for demand IT. for the IT companies. Yeah. So I think fundamentally last year was the year of IT. Yeah. I think this year it will be a more uh, a stable thing. We don't think the dollar, dollar is essentially going to weaken. And with crude also going to hang around the 60 to 70 levels, Indian rupee should be fairly strong during the whole of the year. So that's not a reason to buy IT from a, a currency perspective. And U.S. softness is another factor. So I think your reading is right that the valuation gap is going to narrow. And the buyback is actually not a good signal. It means they don't see good use for their cash. <laughs> Look at the, the why, when will you do a buyback? If you yeah. need the money to make a strong acquisition because you see growth is high and valuations are reasonable, they are saying no, neither is growth very strong nor is valuation reasonable for me to do another acquisition. So let me give the money back to the shareholders. So reading the buyback right I think is also important. Okay, that's your way of looking at that commentary. Although the managements of both of the companies have been you know, very yeah. aggressive when yes. it comes to their growth prospects. NBFCs, you yes. know, ILNFS, the crisis really rocked the sector. Do you think that the credit growth slowdown will be prolonged and will be felt this year as well? See, credit growth slowdown from the NBF sector will be prolonged, mm. uh, but I think the banks will quickly step in. Okay. So the, as an economy, we don't expect credit growth to suffer because we believe the worst of the NPS cycle is, is behind us. One. Second is, is the NCLT paybacks coming through. You will see a lot of cash being freed up for banks to lend again. Banks are sitting on fairly good amounts of CASA balances. Mm -hmm. So I think lending by the public sector and the corporate private sector banks and the retail will quickly step in. But NBFCs, yes, they are going to face a challenge both because now they have to raise money in tune with their liability, asset liability mismatch. Earlier they were running a huge mismatch, okay. you know, using 90-day commercial paper to finance 10-year housing loans. So that gap, so the amount of long-term money available, naturally that pulls strings. Mm -hmm. Second, it's costlier. And third, they have to depend on the very banks to lend. Now a bank has a choice, do I lend to the NBFC at X percent or do I directly lend to the guy that the NBFC is lending to because NBFCs are competition to banks. So banks will play a very smart game, they'll buy, they'll buy the good pool of assets from NBFCs. But in terms of taking risk as far as the, the sector is concerned, they would rather take it directly on a diversified retail portfolio rather than go and lend it and take it through the NBFC. Because anyway, that risk they yeah. will bear. So I think the interesting thing is overall credit in the economy, we feel the banks, there will be a strong pullback from banks resuming their lending cycle. But NBFCs as a sector, I think the challenges will remain because the good ones will survive because this is the time that a good quality NBFC would actually get a a good, good, uh, you know, people willing to back them on lending side. But the medium quality and the lower quality ones are going to see a strong dry up of liquidity. And if they don't have the money, they, no, they can't yeah. lend. So challenges will remain for yes. them. Um, oil prices are staging a rebound right now, but it's been ever so volatile on that front as well. What about the crude linked plays? I think the important point to remember is that a sustained level of below $60 on crude means shale gas industry will suffer. Right, I think so. I think Trump and the shale gas industry will make sure the prices remain at around 60. At the same time, the pressure for it to go beyond 70, I think, is that, that America also gets affected with a higher oil price. So I think the crude will remain in a 60 to 70 dollar band. So this bounce back, whatever you see, will be in a narrow 10 dollar band for the rest of the year because global growth is also not picked up, right? The US is also slowing down. So pure demand based energy thing will not be very strong move. So it's more of technical in terms of cutting back on production, how the OPEC comes together, does that. And the second is that I think the US and Saudi are pretty good in terms of talking to each other and managing this. Mm -hmm. And Russia is the third person who's on the opposite side of the yeah. plate. So essentially it's a three people who control more than half of the world's supply of oil, Russia, US and this. And these two are on one side, there is Trump and uh, Saudi. Saudi and Russia on the other side. So I think the interplay between the two 
will see that Russia wants as a higher oil price as possible to shore up their economy. US wants a lower price, but not so low that shale gas shuts down. Mm. So you will see a very, you know, finely balanced crude between 60 to 70 for the rest of the year. That's that's the read from us. Okay. A quick take on Avenue Supermarts as well. The fact that after that eight percent fall after the earnings, also today the stock is still quoting at eighty times. Do you yeah. buy it? Do you wait for a significant decline? Will it ever come? Because it hasn't till far. I can't talk stock specific, unfortunately. Sure. But I think retail as a play hmm. will continue to do well. I think the, the the consumption story, the money that in election year always leaks through into the consumer will find its play in retail and I, so I think the retail... Irrespective of high valuations? Yes, I think the valuations are actually safety today. See, if you look at it today, the uh, the see, there's two ways you can buy safety. If you have a three to five year view, you buy low P-E ratio stocks because you say there's not much downside. But in a shorter time frame, you want a more certainty behind the earnings. So you actually go and buy a very high P-E stock because the drop is not likely to be so sharp and even if there is a quarterly drop you feel next quarter they'll make it up so i think the that's the the play there is a strong tilt towards safety mm. which is leading to buying more of high variation stocks so i think that's the interplay but you'll see this situation changing post elections in the opposite way like i said okay. that's where i was coming from from my okay. last time Sunil, great to have thank you in the studio today thank, thank you so thank much for taking the time out still status quo really for the market no, no improvement no. Still down by about 70, uh, 80 odd points, 10,750. The breast is looking extremely bleak when it comes to the futures and options universe, heavily skewed in favor of the decline.